my name is Luther Clayton and I am the young filmmaker on YouTube. My name is Atua Moy and my YouTube channel is Atua Moy. My name is Alec J. Fisher and I am Alec from Alec in Waterland on YouTube. On August 25, 2017, Hurricane Harvey hit my state of Texas. It came ashore north of Padre Island National Seashore near Corpus Christi, and it smashed the Port Aransas and Rockport region. Then it went north and stalled over Houston. It caused over $180 billion in damage, ruined over 1 million cars, and killed 82 people. We begin three months later. On September 10th, just a couple weeks after Harvey, Hurricane Irma hit the Florida Keys and moved up the entire state. It was the most powerful Atlantic hurricane ever recorded. From the Caribbean islands to Florida, Irma killed over 140 people. My friends and I decided to meet in Florida for this documentary. Hey, come on. 
Alligator. Hey guys. Hey Tua. A Tua? A Tua? What? A Tua? A Luther? Alex? A Tua. Go on, man. Ooh. All right, we got work to do. Let's go. All right, sounds great. I am at Skunk Ape Headquarters in the swamplands of Florida. Um, I know it better as Mosquito Headquarters because there are quite a few mosquitoes um, this time. After the hurricane, I guess there was so much rain that they just kind of flourished with all that sitting water and everything. Um, but this is the home of the Skunk Ape. As you can see, there's a uh, Sasquatch crossing sign. There's a Sasquatch over there. Um, there have been sightings of the skunk ape in this area and it's a really cool place uh, We've seen some little alligators in the back here They've got kind of a little zoo where they've got some big alligators some little alligators They got the biggest snake I've ever seen. I was just attacked by a bug um, Which I think was a reticulated python um, They've also got like some cool fish and frogs and all sorts of stuff But this place being in the swamplands of Florida um, right across this road is water and it's only probably a foot down um, from the road so when the hurricane came in there was so much water that flooded over that this place was in about two feet of water for two weeks so all that standing water um, it tends to ruin a lot of stuff it makes things difficult the people here had to evacuate um, to get to a dry area um, but the water has now receded um, back into the ground and they're getting things put back together but it's a really cool place in like sardines um, but you guys what's your first impression so far humid lots of bugs yes but awesome <laughs> and wild it's funny how like animals there's simple animals here that people who live here see every day but when you've never seen them before like an alligator like I've never seen an alligator before I saw it, I was like that is the coolest thing I've ever seen whereas with someone who maybe lives here they see that all the time same goes for like you know, just like animals that you may see every day. I found that to be interesting. Mm. Yeah, that's like how it was for the monkeys when we came to Costa Rica. Mosquito. Our experience has been brief as we just recently got here, but it has been humid and full of these guys, if you can see. He's dead now. Nope, he's on the move. I missed. So, um, as long as we still got blood left in us in the morning, we'll see you then. Good night. There's one inside. I'll lean up against the wall of the tent and they can manage to bite through some of the fabric, so that's fun. But yeah, hopefully sleep gets a little better. So, it's about 6 in the morning and sleep hasn't been too solid so far. Um, it's like being in a zombie apocalypse with all these little tiny evil zombies flying onto the windows. Everything is just coated in them out there. We've managed to kill most all of them inside, which is nice because at first we were getting bit while we were trying to sleep. If you guys ever go camping in the Everglades, make sure that your tent doesn't have any holes in it. This is why. The, the amount of mosquitoes is waiting to get in. That is why frogs, bats, and other insect-eating animals are so important. We got there, um, we got out of the car, and within five seconds of opening the doors and the windows, full, full of bugs, all the lights attracted them. Um, it was crazy, there were millions, and because um, I'm type O blood type, um, mosquitoes prefer uh, me over quite a lot of people so I've got a lot of bites all over my body. They're definitely bad compared to some places that I've been to. <laughs> Deet free plant-based mosquito repellent. 
Soothe yeah. and relieves yeah. existing I bites. Mosquito repellent. Pretty cool. Nice. And it also kind of gets you being creative of how to avoid the bugs. I call it sticky knife. It's just a reverse uh, duct tape covered blade and you just boop. See, look at that. Mosquito right there. Instead of him biting me, he's stuck on my blade. So, uh, sorry my voice is a bit froggy. Um, because there is a frog in my throat, and obviously they aren't out here eating the bugs because the bugs are eating me. <laughs> that is crazy, Antoa. Like all sudden here. Okay, this is quite overwhelming the amount of bugs there, but it was fun. Oh, gee! <laughs> Holy <laughs> moly! They're getting more too. What? <laughs> I've That's never seen so, so many bugs in one place. <laughs> I've been told that they're usually not that bad, so hopefully if you guys ever go visit the Everglades that it's not that atrocious. But yeah, they were extremely irritating. They kind of get into your head because you always hear the buzzing and then you're constantly feeling like you're being bit and itchy and then even afterwards, I mean, I'm scratching away all night. But yeah, they were not fun. I don't think it's too bad. It kind of, I feel like it made me have a, maybe a little better time, I think. All right, you guys, we're out here at Kawachabi Animal Preserve, and as you can see, or hear mostly, uh, they just tipped over that little enclosure over there, which, because of the hurricane, started out in this area and ended up in this area. So, we're here today to um, help out, but what the Animal Preserve is, is a um, kind of education facility to teach people about animals and about the importance of preservation and species conservation. So it's um, a lot of what we stand for and um, they'll like go to events or schools. I know when I was little um, there was similar things where they come in with animals and show them to you and it really uh, like sparks your passion for the outdoors. So it's a really cool thing and um, helps make environmentalists of the future. But today we're going to be helping out, um, as I said, with the hurricane damage. They had quite a bit of flooding and uh, debris blown around, so hopefully we can clean up a bit and help get them back on track. What are you doing, Luther? Well, taking off a bolt so that we can separate these two pieces and move them. Um, and it's hot work. Makes you very sweaty, especially in Florida heat. So, if you look to my right, we have um, three little sections here. Not so little, actually. Uh, they're pretty heavy. It's taken uh, quite a few people to move them. And this isn't even the roof. The roof is over there in shambles. Are you able to keep moving that piece? Yeah. Atua, can you lift you right want? there? There you go. Right. We are going to be moving this plant here. It's called Bougainvillea. And it is a very spiky plant. Um, the hurricane uprooted it. It was lush and green like the plants behind, but now it is all spiky and um, it'll help out to, it's stuck to me, to clear this out because um, certain things that need doing are not possible with all this spiky shrubbery in the way. So 
we're gonna get this cleared out and then we'll be on to the next thing but as you can see setting up the pen was a success you guys ready to go got the gloves on so that we don't get impaled So Tua, what you up to? Well, um, it's because this metal got so dented and destroyed from the hurricane, we're just gonna completely remove it. That way we can maybe get the roof back on top of the, the structure that we just rebuilt, but without this metal, because the metal's really dented and like messed up, so I don't think it's usable. We're just trying to take this apart. As you can see, is getting a pretty good suntan out of it. All the lights bouncing right off. Yeah, you gotta close your eyes. <laughs> it's like blinding. Well, Luther and I are gonna finish getting all that bug and via out of here and then help out a tour with the roof. You know, when you got something as large as Irma going through, um, you know, in the case of Irma, even if you left the state, you might not miss it because. You know, they didn't know if it was going to hit Georgia or, or along the East Coast afterwards. They didn't really know exactly where it was going, and it was so large. So you just stock up on stuff so you can, you know, make it through afterwards, you know. Speaking of stocking up, like, since since you're going to stay here, is there anything you would have stocked up a bit more on? Gas. Yeah, gas. Because, we you know, we've been through hurricanes before, um, you know, because uh, I was here when Andrew went through. Um, we didn't have to preserve yet. Uh, but with the preserve, we went through Charlie, we went through uh, Ivan, we went through um, Wilma. Wilma was a direct hit, so that was a pretty severe one. But, you know, all of those hurricanes, a um, couple of them, we never lost power. This one, we lost, we, 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 had, we didn't have power for like 11 or 12 days. Um, oh, so that crazy. was, that was, um, that was pretty intense. Our cable provided not just our cable TV, which I didn't really care about, but uh, I lost my internet and my phone because it was all bundled together. So without having that, I, I lost communication with the outside world. So like even when you wanted, even if you needed help, you couldn't call for it, you know? Yeah. But, but the storm with the, 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 this storm was so large that it just about everything came down. You know, cell towers came down, power lines were down, communication lines were down. It was probably the biggest mess I've ever seen. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was a, a, a rough one, a very rough one. The water came, where that wagon is, the water was up to there. So back there, it was, uh, it was you know, just below your knees. So, um, so we, yeah, we were literally flooded everywhere. I mean, we were on an island. <laughs> so it was like somebody drive down the street, the street was covered with water. Um, if somebody drive down the street, it would actually leave a wake like a boat would, you know. So uh -huh. it's, um, but yeah, it, it's, you know, but we made it through. The, the whole year has been like that. Though, so. Yeah, thanks for sharing <laughs> your experience with the whole thing. Oh, no, it was terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh,
All right, you guys, so we have finally made it, um, drove pretty far south, and we are now at the Big Pine Key Fishing Lodge in the Big Pine Key um, in the Florida Keys. And you guys driving in, it's crazy because they really got whipped by the hurricane. Um, you know, they're just these little uh, pockets of land and when the storm just rolled over and kind of pushed everything off into the ocean. So there's piles of debris everywhere. Um, there's lots of damage. It's a lot more prevalent than um, in the southern area of Florida where we were previously. And uh, the fishing lodge that we're staying at is pretty messed up as well. Um, they're going to need some help to get back on their feet. I know they got all the buildings, all the doors are open. They're drying out stuff, tearing out stuff because it's all ruined for the most part. So um, hopefully we'll get to help them out tomorrow. But for now, we got to set up camp and um, assess the area. So we made it to our campsite and now we're looking around for a fire bowl because we need one of those to be able to build our fire. So we're looking at some of the campsites that have, that got that got wrecked because we might be able to find a fire bowl that got left behind. That is correct. There's a regulation here um, to prevent us from burning down the entire place. Um, they want you to use what's called a fire bowl, and it's just some sort of uh, containment of your fire. So we're looking in an area now that they told us hasn't really been cleaned up yet. Um, hopefully, there's one here. Um, all we've found so far is the beetles, um, but we're going to keep on looking and hopefully we can find a fireball. Hmm. What is that? I just found a plug which goes from one plug to three plugs. I found a plug adapter. extension cord so that's where we camped so that's where we are set, set, yeah, set up is. Over there. so what's this what, what's everything circled just the places just yeah like the bathroom so where haven't they been um it's this area oh. so this is all area with the a lot of the you know debris and stuff that was around here has gotten just pushed over to so we're looking around here, seeing if we can find something. What's that? A bunch of fishing gear. No, oh, it's light yeah. bulbs. <laughs> light bulbs and stuff. Bunch of ideas. Just boxes of stuff from people's garages and houses. Looks like that might be some sort of maybe beach umbrella, fishing net. All sorts of stuff. Just found this little crab. Let's see if we can get him. One segundo. Did the camera dare? I guess the trick doesn't work here in Florida. Big pile of debris and stuff from the... Whoa. It's a bummer seeing all this real, like stuff that was probably in perfectly good condition get totally wrecked from the storm, the hurricane. Here we have stumbled upon the infamous key deer. Um, these guys are a very rare species because they're only in the Keys and um, they somehow managed to survive the hurricane, which is pretty awesome. Look at these guys, they are so cool. <laughs> they're cute. They're smaller than the typical white-tailed deer, it seems like, um, that we get in Texas. Look at that. Looks like the little dikers in South Africa. <laughs> Probably thinks we have food. <laughs> but these guys, I guess, are pretty used to humans, it seems like. Which can be good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't 
don't think I saw these guys the first time around. That's pretty sweet. So it's been said that you can survive a nuclear blast by getting inside of a refrigerator. Um, I'm not sure how true that is, um, but I know one thing for, is for sure, that you cannot survive a hurricane by getting in a refrigerator. It seems that these things are everywhere, and they really get tumbled around and end up um, in your neighbor's yard 10 miles down. That could make do. do. I think that might be the closest thing. That's probably the closest thing we found to a fireball. I agree. We have found a relatively decent piece of sheet metal that we can now use as a fireball or for the same purpose as a fireball. Yeah. So we have quickly come to learn that one of the most rancid smells is stagnant ocean water. It smells like rotten eggs and it's um, in this little levee area next to us. And it's worsened when there is ocean pollution, Al algae and seaweed. Yep, with everything that gets blown into the water, you know, it just kind of intensifies it. it smells like just really bad algae bloom. Okay, well we managed to set up our little campsite. We got this big tent and now we just slowly start working on our fire and stuff. But we're kind of like the majority around us is ocean. Probably like half of our surrounding is the ocean. There is a freeway over there, so you do hear that. I look in Wilderland special. Need a shaving piece. Ooh, that All I need is a fire going for 20 minutes, and then I'll have a fire going. You can give me a fire to start with, I will return two fires to you. That is a bright light. We got the fire. Oh, fireman. <laughs> it is a beautiful morning here at the Big Pine Key Fishing Lodge on the Big Pine Key and um, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, seeing it in the daylight you can definitely see there's lots of debris um, lying around. You know the hurricane hit about two months ago and they've been working so hard to try and get it back open and only two days ago they were able to open their doors to the public again um, but there's still lots of work to be done you know it can't be done just by the few people who actually work here you know they're kinda on their own at this point so uh, we decided to step in and try and help out uh, with what we can today uh, we're gonna be doing a few different things maybe helping rake up some of the debris um, got a magnet here I uh, don't know if you guys have ever heard of magnet fishing but you know I'm a fan of uh, all types of fishing so I'm gonna uh, be doing some of that today but what it is is you just take a magnet this is looks like a neodymium magnet of some sort and it's got about 150 pounds of pull and you uh, tie it on to some strong cord that can withstand that type of force throw it out into the water so either the ocean or the canal here I know we saw some signs in the water um, it'll strap on and then you pull it in and you can clean out the debris. Uh, most people use it to find relics like um, safes or guns or whatever that have been thrown into rivers, but uh, we're gonna be using it to clean up today. Yeah, right now we're just waiting to get word of what they want us to do, but I think we're gonna be doing a lot of raking and just like cleaning up, put, like moving out, because there's just like debris like spread out everywhere, get it all into like one area. And yeah, I think a lot of cleaning up and hopefully we'll get a chance to do some magnet fishing. Sounds pretty interesting. 
and just the whole destruction around these areas, just driving here and especially down here, the big Pine Key fishing lodge there, the destruction is just so immense. So I'm very privileged really to be able to get my hands on and help these guys to clean it up and help everyone else in this community. onto something so then I came over to help because his magnet kept like detaching and I came over was trying to help get it and we were here for like 20 minutes like oh we almost got it we almost got it maybe we should try this try that and then I was able to get like a little hook underneath it and pull it up and then it's just a big tree branch <laughs> Hurricanes definitely have an impact on the fish. It kills a lot of fish um, because of the water mixture. What happens is as so much rain is coming down in the ocean, it messes with the salinity levels and it kills saltwater fish because they aren't used to it. And the same thing tends to happen in freshwater pools in a place like the Keys or even on the coast of um, the continental United States, you know, along um, the land as the waters the storm surge brings in all these huge waves it's pushing the salt water into freshwater pools and it's having the same effect as in the ocean where it's killing the freshwater fish because they can't handle the salt um, and then the brackish um, as well it'll kill the fish because it just messes with the salinity levels i mean it's a whole big mess so we have been given our mission and the three musketeers are on it what we are going to be doing today which happens to be thanksgiving and i am very thankful that we can be helping out down here is raking so we've all got our rakes um, we are armed with rakes and we are ready to rake uh, there is lots of trash blown around as you can see from who knows where apparently there were lots of trailers over here that got demolished um, there's like there's picnic tables over there that they've collected again um, just lots and lots of trash all over the place so hopefully we can make um, a dent on it help them out there's a hat and over here you can see some trailers there's a destroyed car right there in the back that's pretty mangled um, and then a lot of it gets in the water too which that'll be um, the second task for these guys once they get this all cleaned up which is probably going to take quite some time um, because there are only a few people i mean it's the owners who are actually trying to clean this up they don't really have much for um, volunteer work like we're doing today um, so it would be a good help if um, people could get out and just see what they can do in this community. Um, but yeah, so enough talking, let's get raking. So yeah, there's a lot of garbage and stuff that, that gets pushed into these trees and all these plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb through here, try to get back here where you can't back here you can't really rake because everything is like stuck in the branches so you kind of just have to go in with some gloves and by hand you just grab out the individual stuff you can already see some stuff around here try to get one of the things
when helping to clean out from stuff like hurricanes, you always want to be cautious. I mean, look at the assortment of the type of stuff that's here. There's a lighter, there's like tackle boxes I found. Um, there's, looks like fake grass, like on a mini golf course. Um, pieces of air conditioning. I've also found like glass and rusty metal and knives. So you always want to wear your gloves to be safe. Um, but yeah, it's just crazy how much random stuff because everyone's house gets flooded and it pulls everything out. Stuff gets thrown all over the place. So um, it can cause quite a few problems because there's certain products that you don't want getting into the waterways or animals consuming. So it's always um, important to get this all cleaned up. But it's a very long process, very slow process. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Hot. The clouds have finally gone over the sun, so getting a bit of a cool down. But we've made around nine piles of all this debris, and we find just the most random stuff, like you name it. Um, but I noticed the most plentiful objects tended to be fishing supplies and tools. Um, I know there were trailers, like campers, around here, so we also find uh, pieces of like siding and bolts, and also a lot of that. Uh, fake grass stuff like over there that they use on mini golf courses. I know people lay it out in front of their uh, trailers to sit on and stuff. It's strange because of the winds. There were, there's like stuff on the top of these trees, like plastic and hoses, just like hanging up there. So I was trying to get those down. But yeah, like stuff you wouldn't expect is here. Like it's like strange things, and you kind of go through it. I, Alex said it earlier that you go through it like layers. So you will be raking and you find all these objects and then you think you're done, but then you just dig a tiny bit of sand out of the way and you find even more um, objects and then you dig a tiny bit of sand out of the way and there's even more. And what I noticed is that um, there's just so, so, so much stuff, even though we're two months into cleaning up and they've been cleaning here every single day um, since, since the hurricane. And there's still a lot, a lot of stuff to do. Um, so it is crazy, it gives you an image and a picture of what it was like um, the day after the hurricane. Yep. A lot of this stuff isn't gonna decompose for a long time if it was just left here, so they'll probably come in with bulldozers and uh, ship out these piles and then maybe take out some of these trees because a lot of them have died from um, hurricane damage, you know, getting uprooted and all. And then they've got trash in there and it's polluting the water. And it's just a whole lot of nasty. But, as I mentioned earlier, it is Thanksgiving today, so we are probably going to head out and see um, if we can find a Thanksgiving dinner. It's really crazy seeing how much stuff there is everywhere, because you gotta think, you know, it's been a few months since they've been, they've been cleaning up and, you know, restoring everywhere, and there's still spots that haven't even been, like, touched. So, like, we went to some spots and helped cleaned up, and they, there's just a crazy amount of bags and just everything you could think of and there's things up in the trees and things buried under the sand and 
in every little spot you could think of. So it's pr it's really crazy seeing how from all the winds and stuff, stuff just ends up in every little nook and cranny and up in every branch. You see s so much variety in the de debris. It's not just like trees and random bits of scrap metal. You see everything from kids toys to fridges to roofs of houses um, and it just gives you an overall picture of how it destroyed communities and impacted them um, not just destroying homes and everything but getting the things that were the possessions that belong to the people it's not just the house that and their property that gets destroyed it's what makes what, what defines them that is taken away from them so um, just driving through it's it's pretty crazy but when you get in um, and you, you're working with it and hands-on you're raking and you're cleaning it is pretty much another story because you get to see it all um, firsthand and um, you, you find an item and you sort of try and build up a, a story of what was behind it and um, yeah it's the destruction is very immense and yeah it's, it's definitely had an impact on the communities you know you see it through a TV screen on the news and you don't really think much of it it might have a bit of an impact on you but it's not the same as seeing it firsthand when you see it firsthand and meet the people who are having to deal with this and these piles of debris are people's homes and all their belongings I mean it's extremely disheartening and it's something that I would really like to continue helping with to uh, fix that um, but yeah it's not not fun not something you want to see Alright guys, we're here in Key West, Florida and today is a very special day because we will be visiting a place that I visited when I was just a wee little tiny human, but it is even more special for one reason, and that is Jack's here! Hey guys! Hey guys, my name is Jack, I'm from Wild Sides on YouTube. Uh, we will all be visiting um, this point. At this point, it's just right across the street. Keep it a surprise till we get there. So here it is. You may remember it from 2014. It is the mile marker zero sign, the southernmost point of the U.S. highways. And so we're all gonna touch it. Ready, guys? Three, two, one. On September 20th, just 10 days after Irma, Hurricane Maria slammed Puerto Rico. It had already devastated Dominica and many islands in the Caribbean. Over 500 people were killed. Four months later, as I record this voiceover, roughly 400,000 people in Puerto Rico are still without power. All right, you guys, so we have now headed over to the southernmost point of the continental United States. And um, I was here a while back, as you guys probably know, and the only areas affected by the hurricane wasn't just, you know, Florida and Texas. It was also Puerto Rico, the Caribbean islands just got uh, flattened. So we're here to acknowledge them and pay our respects because, you know, they've got to deal with just as much hurricane damage, if not more, because, you know, Florida's really built to withstand hurricanes and then the islands, you know, not as much money in the economy. So it's a little more devastating so we're just here to look out towards them and pay our respects we're actually 90 miles from cuba yep yeah right off this coast 
Shall we wave? Give him a wave. Give him a wave. Hope you're recovering well. After seeing the destruction here in Florida, we can only imagine what it is like over in Puerto Rico and the Caribbean islands. So it feels good to pay our respects and and pray, hope and pray that they are recovering well and making good progress. Yeah. Yeah, I've got family over in Puerto Rico and they had to take off because the storm was so bad and it just flattens a lot of stuff. Just the wind power is knocking over buildings, just tearing up trees, all sorts of terrible stuff. Glad we were able to make it here to acknowledge them. Yep. Yeah, unfortunately we can't be there right now. Uh, maybe someday. Are you ready? Alright, so we're shooting for this point right up here. Right up right there. Alright. Ready? Three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Sort of hurricanes Woo. and natural disasters, they're, they're inevitable, they're going to happen. Um, but we can take it upon ourselves to reduce the impact it has on our economy, our, our, our environment, um, by, I guess, raising awareness, getting everyone to realize the actual effects um, that can occur. A lot of people don't live in these areas that do get affected. Um, so just letting other people know what is happening. Well, you know, I like the idea of thinking sort of like a bit of a minimalist because you could um, stock up on a lot of supplies and a lot of things, but then what if you have to leave your home? Then you no longer have all that supplies that you stocked up on. So I think trying to learn how to do stuff and what you, like learning how to make do with the stuff that you can find. In an environmental science class at school, um, I do a lot of research on the scientific background of climate change. And I am a firm believer that the change in climate is something that is real and happening and having an effect on these storms, you know? What's happening is all the greenhouse gases that we are creating through fossil fuels is going into the atmosphere, it's um, bouncing around the greenhouse effect and it's warming up the ocean waters by one or two or three degrees and it's having such a massive effect because climate is not something that's really supposed to change that much. It's a set um, weather pattern that is for the balance of the natural areas. Storms, the hurricanes, actually thrive off of warmth in the ocean so they're actually becoming stronger and stronger and it's intensifying them, it's turning tropical storms into hurricanes um, and it's just making everything a few degrees more dangerous. If we can reduce our um, fossil fuel usage, you know, reduce pollution, it will help. It will help restore the natural balance of the earth and hopefully we won't get wiped out the earth by natural disasters. Jack and I both have anoles right now. This one's got quite a bit of detail on him. Yeah. Jax likes to jump. <laughs> no. All right guys, so we have stopped at the Key West Post Office. Um, there are lots of chickens out front, so it's a pretty cool little place, but we are going to be mailing out um, some postcards today. This looks like a lot of postcards, doesn't it? Well, each of us has an entire stack. So, we did a whole lot of signing the other night, and now it's time to mail them out to you guys. So, let's be on our way. Hey guys, so this is Jack, and we're at Seabase. So what Seabase is, actually, how about Patrick, or AKA Patty, tells us what Seabase really is. So Seabase, we are one of the uh, high adventure bases associated with the Boy Scouts of America. We run some pretty amazing programs here. Oh, we focus particularly on sailing and scuba diving. So we provide an opportunity for youth participants to come in and get some really, really cool, unique opportunities out on the water that may not be easily available to them at other places across the country. So it's, it's a pretty awesome thing to be a part of. So the Boy Scout motto is being prepared. How did you prepare yourself for hur the hurricane? 
Well, it was um, it was definitely an adventure. Um, the important thing to say about the prep leading up to the hurricane was, it was it was some it was a new experience for all of us. We're we're talking about a, a major storm that the Keys hadn't really seen something of this magnitude in a long time. A lot of it was it was kind of an unknown territory for a lot of us. So it took a lot of brainstorming and uh, really just overall team effort to figure out the best way to go about being prepared for that storm. How did you kind of storm proof the buildings? So we have an incredible seasonal staff that was on base at the time. And it was, uh, we just really made checklists, just went down the list, looking at say, hey, we, we need to secure this, we need to secure this. Um, luckily, we, we have lots of line on base because we work with lots of boats. So we had lots of the tools that were necessary already on hand to be able to secure picnic tables and all the different structures, things like that, trash cans and everything around base. Everything that could be put away was put away. Everything that couldn't be put away. We we have a lot of staff that are really good with knots, with working with lines. So it was it was it was an all-out effort to make sure everything was secure. We um, run a lot of amazing programs and it's uh, an incredible opportunity to uh, to be a staff member here. And it's something that our, our entire staff takes a lot of pride in, in being able to be a part of. Thank you for giving me this tour and your time and I can't wait to see you in June. We'll be, uh, we'll be definitely excited to have you. Alright you guys, so we are back here at Dolphins Plus in Key Largo and I had actually come here in my Across America adventure in 2014. Um, I was a bit smaller last time I was here, but um, the dolphins are here and they're very active as you can see, they're swimming around down there. And they were affected by the hurricane. Um, the water levels actually came up to about right here on me, around here, and the dolphins um, even though they could have swam off into like the building and all around here, they chose to stay in the deep area like the good dolphins that they are. So, there they are behind me. But yeah, obviously um, they took a hit, probably lost quite a bit of stuff indoors with the floodwaters and the water became very brackish from all the rainfall. Yeah, it's cool being back. Definitely a different experience to have uh, two of my buddies with. Uh, it's a lot of fun to have, you know, other kids around, or and then Jack joined as well, so three buddies. Um, but yeah, I've really enjoyed uh, filming with them. It's a lot of fun just messing around, going out and finding stuff because we're all into the same adventuring type style. So we're able to um, come together and like push each other to um, do different stuff, and it's very enjoyable. And I also really like the style of Atua and Luther's filming. It's really fun to see how they vlog because I'll see it um, through YouTube, but you know, I never really get to see it um, firsthand like I did on this trip. You know, it's the little things that are really sad. Like this hurricane, there's stuff everywhere, but something as simple as this little palm tree right here. See this palm tree right here? Well, this palm tree only has one leaf attached to the top and it's dead and it's really sad when you just see like this tree that was probably growing all nice it's probably super healthy and after the hurricane it's just completely lost all of its leaves it's totally dead and it's little things like that that make you all like oh that's sad but huh. let's keep on going Okay, update. 
swelling is increasing on my face, on my arms, on my neck, everywhere. And I've got lots of bites. Um, I think just being able to do it collectively as a group, so with Atua, with Alec, um, and the rest of the team, just getting, we, we all got our hands in there, no one sort of sat on the sidelines um, and watched it all. So we all got in to try and help and you know we could s still have fun it wasn't all just an emotional and serious time we could still have fun i mean the locals they're very cheery they're very happy um and everyone's morale was so high so yeah adventuring with a group and doing everything collectively is much more exhilarating than doing it on your own and it feels like you are making progress so we just got word there is a stingray down here Huge stingray. Right, <laughs> see if we can film it. Oh. That's a man. That's a man because it has the head. Wow, this is insane. You can see so much from up here. So explain what it is. Um, I think it's a manta ray because stingrays kind of their head, their eyes are on top of their head. It's yeah. kind of a mound on top, but I'm not completely sure because yeah. I'm from Oklahoma, but the manta rays, I think their head comes out a little bit, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what we're seeing on this one right here. And you think that's the one leaping out of the water? I think that's the one that's leaping out of the water. Jolly! massive shark right there, guys. Holy I think that's a nurse shark. Yeah, that's a nurse shark because look how long it's... Oh, yeah. It's, uh, there's an enormous God. shark in the water right there. Come on, come on. My camera's I not working. <laughs> oh my God. The shark is massive. That's it's a nurse shark. A what? what? A nurse shark. All right, guys, so we've got a nurse shark here and a manta ray over there. And the nurse shark is humongous. Holy cow. Myself, Alec, Luther, and Jack, that's eight eyes looking around instead of just your two eyes. So you're over here and then they're over there and then they're like, oh look, I spot this lizard. And then you get to see, you end up seeing maybe more animals and more interesting things that I feel otherwise you may not spot because you're just yourself looking around. So that's really fun. Oh yeah. Iguananas. Catching some rays. That sting rays, sun rays. Everyone's, everyone has like a different outlook on everything. So you get to hear everyone's different opinions and how you should maybe do something. So you know, you, you have your idea and then you hear someone else's idea and you're like, no, that's actually a pretty good idea. And then you're like, maybe I'll change my idea slightly and tweak it. So that's been really cool. Um. But yeah, it was really cool, and then also the whole helping out people, it's a different thing that we don't really um, do for the episodes as far as um, the main priority is uh, going out and like helping hands-on and everything. Usually we're just out adventuring around and showing off the beautiful wilderness, but yeah, we got to do some new stuff this trip, and it was a lot of fun, and I'm glad I got to spend it with the people that I did. So I'm out here fishing with a hand line using a... A clay rock that I found, um, a hook with some squid and some fishing line that someone left, and I managed to catch what looks like a type of goby or sculpin of some sort. Not real familiar with the species, so I'm gonna be careful. But look at those colors; it's gorgeous. All right, guys, you can see he's got some teeth in there. I was taking them off; he bit down on my thumb, but I'm good. Now I'm gonna pop them back in the water. Goodbye, Gobi. And there he goes. We caught what looks to be a species of snapper on the same hand line. Now I've got an actual weight on here. But look at that, it's a pretty fish, it's got some blue dots. Um, I think I might have caught this species last time I was in the Keys, but I don't recall for sure. But it's a beautiful fish. Um, now it's the two is turn to get one. We're gonna <laughs> bait him up and hopefully, the fish have been stealing his bait over and over. So now let's get him hooked on. 
but yeah, we'll get this guy back in the water and we'll see you next time. All right guys, so Atua just caught his first Florida fish and look at those colors, holy moly. That is no doubt a Florida fish. How are you feeling Atua? Very good about myself. Thanks to Alec for the tips. Look at that beauty. Got quite the colors on it. Just been fishing with squid. Atua had a lot of hard work and determination and he finally got one. We're gonna get her unhooked and back into the water. Just caught my first ever fish here in Florida. Thanks Alec <laughs> for the help. No <laughs> Ah, man. So you guys, as with all adventures, they have to come to an end at some point. And we are nearing the end of this adventure, unfortunately. But you guys, all in all, we had um, a great time. We did a lot of good, had a lot of fun doing it. And I'm glad I could enjoy this adventure with these three awesome adventure buddies. And yeah, it was a really cool time. It was a very eye-opening experience for, I think, everyone seeing the hurricane damage. Um, it was a great feeling to be able to help out people. Um, we caught a few fish, we caught a few lizards, um, caught some sun rays. So yeah, Jack got to avoid the bugs, but he um, got to join us for the uh, nice little beach part. Uh, we had a lot of fun, and even though it was a cool, fun adventure, don't forget, that the point of this episode was to bring awareness to the hurricane damage and recovery. See if you can um, put a little good into someone's life and give them a boost into the path of recovery. Hopefully we will uh, reunite at some point to do some more adventures because I can honestly say that this was a blast. I had a whole lot of fun. It's time for us to head our separate ways and go on home. So until next time you guys, remember to do more awesome stuff. Be nimble, be quick, stay curious, and stay wild! 2014 was the planet's warmest year on record. Now one year doesn't make a trend, but this does. 14 of the 15 warmest years on record have all fallen in the first 15 years of this century. I've heard some folks try to dodge the evidence by saying, they're not scientists, that we don't have enough information to act. Well, I'm not a scientist either. But you know what? I know a lot of really good scientists at NASA and at NOAA and at our major universities. And the best scientists in the world are all telling us that our activities are changing the climate. And if we don't act forcefully, we'll continue to see rising oceans, longer, hotter heat waves, dangerous droughts and floods, and massive disruptions that can trigger greater migration and conflict and hunger around the globe. The Pentagon says that climate change poses immediate risks to our national security. We should act like it. And that's why...